So there are several reasons that went into getting a bus. One, it's charming. You can't drive down the street without somebody smiling, waving, or having some like fuzzy good feeling like, oh, back in the 70s I totally did that, or I wanted to do that, or my gosh, it, apartments are so expensive, why am I wasting my money, that's something I want to do. There is definitely an aspect of, of uh, pride of ownership with this, because these school buses basically reflect your vision, or in my case, lack thereof. I just wanted a cool looking bus. I just, I didn't want the Home Depot bus. I wanted like some cool wooden man cave where I could travel around the country and make YouTube videos. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Jack Austin, and this is Dan the Adventure Bus. Okay, so the exterior of the bus is actually, it's not paint, it is a vinyl graphic wrap. For six months I was sponsored and they provided the wrap as part of the sponsorship. So up top I have 320 watts of solar. Next to that is uh, an AstroTurf uh, lawn that I like to refer to as Milan. Sounds fancy. All right, um, let's go have a peek at the uh, rooftop lawn and the uh, 320 watts of uh, AM solar up top. So what you see here is the obvious. This is a uh, piece of AstroTurf. I got an end of the roll uh, deal actually here in Tucson. It was only a hundred bucks. Home Depot sells the same thing for 300 something bucks. Why pay more money? <laughs> um, oh, and I, I, I adhered it with um, Fuse It, like a liquid nails product. It hasn't blown off and I don't think it will. These are two 160 watt panels. I got them from a place uh, in Oregon. Uh, AM Solar, very, very nice people. You get panels from them or any products from them, you can call them, harass them all every single day that they're open and ask them all kinds of questions. They recommend a two to one ratio. So two up top to one down below. So technically I should have 600 watts uh, of solar for a 300 amp hour battery system. However, I charge off the alternator, I drive a lot. It doesn't seem to be a, a problem at this point. I just installed a tankless hot water heater. So as of a couple weeks ago, I can take a blazing hot shower on the outside of my bus. And that makes me a very, very happy bus lifer. Uh, I did this all myself, the shower. When you buy a school bus and you teach yourself how to do mechanics and fix things up, you learn as you go. I, I don't know if I would have had the confidence to do this when I first started, but I did this thing completely by myself and I can pat, my, pat myself on the back and say good job for that one. Trunks, or if you're in the middle of nowhere, you could go nude or boxers, you know. Uh, I even let a girl use it, she was in a bikini. Um, so yeah, it's more kind of like a shower at the beach kind of thing, but just bring your own eco-friendly biodegradable soap. And there's, it's really easy. To make a shower is super, super easy. Under the bus I have propane, that's the fuel source. Then I have a water tank, that's where the water obviously comes from. Next to that is a pump, and then you just drill through the bus, it goes into here, hopefully it works, and then that's it, you got a shower, presto. It was very, very easy. Uh, now for the inside, I have some nice uh, cheap Target uh, doormats here, and this is the inside. Basically, the theme is reclaimed, reclaimed, reclaimed. Everything you see in here except for the plywood pretty much is reclaimed. This, for example, was a 16-foot piece of barn rafter that we got at the store in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. A buddy of mine was a, a woodworker, so between the two of us, we turned this thing into a countertop. I did have a chopping block, but I didn't want to do anything that people have done before. I wanted to go totally new on this one. These are all reclaimed as well. Couldn't tell you what they originally were, but I do like them now as my little sink uh, cabinets. The wood, it's not from one building. We went to like a reclaimed wood store, like a reseller. So I wasn't actually out at some barn, like with a crowbar, taking a piece of wood off of it. I, I went to the store and I paid uh, per board foot. So this whole thing, for example, I think it was around 60 bucks or something. But then of course we had to put it together and you have to, you know, add work to it. And also my friend who helped me, I, I paid him. So, but yeah, so it can be fairly inexpensive depending on where you get it. This is just a standard hardware store fridge. I would highly not recommend it. Uh, this is my second one. Thankfully, uh, I took the other one back to Home Depot. No receipt. I swapped it out for a new one. This happened to be the um, display one, which is why that stuff is still on it. Get yourself a 12 volt fridge or as we were talking earlier, a 20 volt, 24 volt fridge. And if possible, get a top loader because 
That way the cold air doesn't fall out, which kicks on the compressor and eats up your battery. Funny thing about the fridge. So I tried to save money. This was like 130 bucks. The 12 volt fridges uh, are a lot more. Uh, we'll say six or 700 bucks. I left the fridge on 24 hours a day for a year. And guess what happened? I ruined my $700 batteries. So just a few weeks ago, I had to replace them. I'll show you those in a minute. I was not a very happy camper, but that just goes to show, be penny dollar smart and penny stupid or something, or vice versa, whatever it was, I made a terrible mistake. So that's, yeah, that's the story with that. If I did another school bus, which I really wanna do, I would do things a lot differently on the next one. This one is just plumbed right to two six and a half gallon water containers. And I honestly don't even know if any water has actually ever been pumped out of this thing. Like I, I just don't use it. And I find it a complete waste of space in a very small place, which is not my idea of a good time. So what I do is my favorite way to cook is with a little pressure cooker. It's nice and clean. And honestly, what I've been doing is I cook pretty much only vegetables, not because I'm vegetarian, but because of like cost and things like that. Just meat's expensive. So if I do like lentils or some vegetables, cook it up in the pressure cooker, maybe some rice. Then after that, I'll throw in some water and heat it up again, slosh it around, wipe it out, and that's it. Two out of three meals come from this thing. Um, I, I, I have been doing morning shakes. And those have been super, super helpful, really easy. This thing leaks, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, it, it does a trick. Next uh, in the bus, um, I like to call this thing the dump trunk. This is where all the magic happens. And of course it is a treasure chest and that's where all the brown gold is right there. I have myself a little uh, porta potty curve, which is uh, battery operated right here. Just press on that, shoots the water through, has a little holding tank down below great little toilet. I'm on the road, so a little stick vacuum, uh, battery powered is really the best way to go. And since it is my toilet, I also keep my uh, fabric softener in there just to make sure everything smells fresh, smells clean. It's a two-part system for the toilet. The top part is where you sit, obviously, and where you, all the fun happens. And then uh, there's a, a holding tank for fresh water, and there's a little trap door. So before you use it, you open the trap door, you do your business, you hit the flush, and everything goes into a collection uh, bin. And then you shut, you know, the trap door. And then when it kind of fills up, uh, you have to dispose of it and then rinse. I highly suggest <laughs> rinsing it out. I made a mistake one time and didn't do that. It was, oh, yeah, you get the idea. Um, so this thing costs like 130 bucks. The composting ones are a thousand bucks. If you gave me a thousand bucks, I would buy myself an electric, electric skateboard, not a composting toilet. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to compost, you know, knock yourself out. That's, um, for me, not my idea of a good purchase. So this originally was kind of an open area. When I made the whole bus, I had kind of no idea what I was doing. I, I just was like, I didn't even know what side the bench was going to go on. I thought that would be safer in the event of an accident to be behind the wall and the driver. But yeah, this was open for a while and then I just bolted it into uh, the wheel well and here we have, it almost looks like I did it on purpose. Nothing in here was on, pur <laughs> on purpose except the LED lights. Uh, everything else is kind of just an accident. The LEDs, let me grab the remote. So the LEDs, uh, there's actually two of them and they're connected back there. You can barely see it in the middle, but basically they just run off 110 you can do colors, uh, you can change the color, um, you can do crazy things like um, a flash thing where they kind of come in and come out. You can do like the meteor where it like goes around and stuff. It's just, you know, I don't know. I, I wanted basically indirect lighting and that was one, that's basically the, the main reason why it's, it's an open layout like this. It's just personal taste preference. It's already a small space, so if you built in like this, then you're in like an RV kind of situation where everything's very, you know, closed in kind of. In the back, I have what I call the world's most comfortable mattress. Uh, it's a memory foam mattress. The brand happens to be Yoga Bed. They're probably all very similar um, in quality, but this one, every single friend of mine who's been on this thing 
has slept so well. It's absolutely incredible. I have installed in, in the back, as well as the front, four six by nine speakers. It's not the optimum ideal setup when I'm driving. It's almost kind of hard to hear because I'm down a bit from them, but it's plenty, plenty loud. I also have a, a powered sub under the seat and everything, so it's, you know, it has a nice sound to it. This up here is the AC unit, which runs off of the engine. Uh, above the windows, we have this, uh, it's actually just cedar tongue and groove. This is the tongue, this is a groove. We cut one of the grooves off, we made it flat. There's a one by one piece of cedar on, on the top and the bottom part. And uh, that's where, you know, where it hides the lights basically. So there's a couple of reasons for that. This side of the bus, there's tons of wires, all the bus wires, the brake lights, the flashers, the everything. It, it was kind of strung all the way back. I wanted to hide it, I wanted it to look good, but I also wanted my lights. So that's how this came about. This is just copper pipe. I was gonna do the steel, like electrical pipe, the, the really heavy stuff, but this was actually really cheap. It was like, I don't know, 10 bucks for a eight foot piece or something like that. Um, and then just to use the end caps to pull it away from the wood, you can get a nice view, but because you need a little space for the curtains. So these are just end caps, that's a flat plate, and then that's like a little mounting bracket and we just drilled into the wood. So it's, it honestly like, it looks great, but if you knew how cheap it was, you kind of laugh. So we have a little bit of storage down here. Uh, basically I just have like these black plastic bins and then uh, my, you know, camp top thing. This is a, a sleeping bag, so when it gets cold, I just grab it out of here. The other side is, you know, shoes, and that's just to kind of keep things tidy, but also to keep it smelling good in here. Midway through, there is a, a partition, and then on the back side, there's the water tank, there's a surfboard, snowboard, the water pump, uh, wetsuits, uh, things like that. So the water, the water tank in the back, it's a 46 gallon tank, and then I have a SureFlow water pump, which is wired to the battery, 12 volts, and then I have a little on-off switch, and then that just plums through the back, you know, to, to the shower, basically. The 46 gallons could last me quite a while. It depends how quick of a shower I take. I've never run out of water, let's just say that, but having a functional shower is actually a new thing. That's my second tankless water heater, the first one crapped out. I guesstimated that I would probably have enough for uh, shoot, even 10 showers at four gallons, 4.6 gallons. I mean, how many gallons do you need to, to clean yourself when you're you know, on the road and where you really need one? So, but then if you have two people, just divide that in half, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it should be enough to be off the grid for say five days or so, which is, you know, about enough time to go get new water, fresh water, new food. So I, I'm set for a few days. The tank, the rear tank is not my drinking water. It is exclusively for showers. If I, like I said, if I did it over, there'd be a lot of things I did differently. One is properly plumbing the whole thing too. So next up over here is a, kind of my storage. So on the top I have just really basic things like a tripod, <laughs> hydrogen peroxide, bug spray, you know, that kind of stuff. Next one down is food. Below that is clothing. And that's basically all I brought is one drawer worth of clothing. You know, pants, shorts, basically everything pretty much fits in here. Next up here is what looks like the couch area. And it is. And underneath is, is where all the power is. Uh, this is just a, a dense five inch foam thing that you can get from a Joann's or somewhere like that. Actually did it in town. And then the best way to see the battery and stuff and this is just a little like saddle blanket, like I call it a hipster blanket. It's in all the Instagram pictures these days. <laughs> this is where all the power is. These are brand new 300 amp hour six volt batteries. We doubled the six volt, made a 12 volt and kept the 300 amp hours. That's how it works. I also have a charge off the alternator so I can draw about 50 amps from the engine when it's running. So I have power if it's sunny and I'm parked and I have power at nighttime if I'm driving, which is pretty awesome in, in, in you know my book. Next to that, I have a 2000 watt inverter, 3000 peak. And then I have a little heater, which is from the uh, engine. And I honestly never turn it on. I should have ripped it out. And that's also something I would have done differently. It, it, it's worthless, especially if you put your electronics or your power next to it, because you're just gonna, 
you're gonna overheat your inverter. This is a newly installed battery monitor. I'm at 99.8%. You will damage your AGM batteries if you let it get below 12.2. I learned the hard way. And monitoring it on a solar charge controller can kind of work, but that's not the actual voltage. That's just the voltage coming in to the system. Sometimes this and this can be a little bit different. So let's just do a little check here. So this says I'm at 13.1 and this is 12.9. So there is a little discrepancy and even there's a little sun today as well. So I would highly recommend you spend the extra 200 bucks, get yourself a battery monitor. One of the most important things in my mind is when you do a school bus, it, it's the noise factor, right? When you have an RV, it's, it's a turnkey thing. It is made, you know, by professionals. It's ready to go. But when you have a school bus, it, 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 you, you do it all yourself. And what a lot of people fail to talk about or to, to do the upgrade is, is to address the noise. So I used like three different noise products. I replaced the doghouse uh, insulation on the inside with a, um, a Dyna, Dyna liner, like a hood liner, Dynamat hood liner. Great product, really expensive. If there's an alternative, go for it because it's gonna set you back a little bit. Also, I use the, the Dyna pad. Like I said, no endorsement. If there's a better product, cheaper, use it. That cut down on the noise significantly. I also used the thin, sticky rubber kind of thing, which is more like sound insulation for like, you know, audio systems and stuff. I basically put it everywhere I could because the thing was so freaking noisy. It's like, I couldn't even talk on the phone. And now I can basically have a very quiet conversation with somebody in the back at freeway speeds. And also under all these floors, it's all sound insulation, but it only goes basically everything except the steps and, and, and under here. If I did it over, I would do every single square inch of this thing in some kind of sound insulation. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope if any of you are thinking about the bus life, if I was able to motivate you to try it, uh, that would make me really happy. I do make mostly daily uh, travel videos in Dan the Adventure Bus, traveling around the US. If you wanna check it out, just type in Jax Austin into YouTube, or you can find me anywhere online. So I'll see you guys uh, hopefully on my channel. Oh, and by the way, if you come over, Say you came from Chris and G and uh, comment in one of the videos. I'll make sure to comment back. Thank you. Yeah, you got it, man.